ask yourself. You know, when they start asking you questions, like for instance, do you believe in the Trinity? You have to realize that that is a foolish and unlearned question. When we preach Jesus Christ as God, we talk about the spirit that was in the man. And I want you to hear me. The man of him. The flesh of him. Didn't come from heaven. Because the term Godhead does not fully convey what it means. The term Godhead or the, the three words that are used there connote to us God himself. The fullness of God, his nature, who he is. So whoever God is, which goes against what Gino said, whoever God is, whatever God's nature is, that's the exact same nature that Jesus has. Now, how could it be that he took on flesh? Because he's God. That's the point. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that's the point. He can take on flesh and still be God. Why? Because he's God. You can't do it. And because you can't do it, I can't do it. We can't understand it. Cannot fathom how that can be. Oh, but here's all we need to understand. He's God. You're not. He can. You can't. That's all it is. That's what it means to be you and to be me. He's God. He ain't like us. Rule number one, understand this. There's one God. Rule number two, you ain't him. Rule number three, in case you forget rule number two, have someone else explain to you rule number one. That's how that goes. Okay. Rule number one. He's God, and there is only one God. Rule number two, you ain't him, and neither am I. Rule number three is where it gets a bit complicated. Now, Jesus Christ means anointed Messiah who saves. There is no savior if not for the peril of sin. So let's start there. There is no separation from God except for the dilemma of sin. And for those who frequently watch this channel, you know I often say how incredibly expensive sin is. So let's start with two scriptures. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 and Galatians chapter 3 verse 13. Galatians 3.13 says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Prior to the fall of Adam, Adam did not need a savior because there was no sin. He did not need the Holy Spirit living inside him because he was walking with God. Okay. Hebrews chapter four, verse 12 says the word of God pierces even to the division of soul and spirit. That's exactly what happened to Adam after he fell. He became a three part being. So God, in order to save man, would have to send himself into the future as a man in the flesh, sacrifice for our sins. But more on that later. If you believe there's more than one God, because the only one that believes there's more than one God are heathenistic hellions. Right. Use a heathen and a hellion. <laughs> and a hellion and a heathen. <laughs> because only the devil's children Notice, I didn't say the devil, because the devil believes is one and tremble. That's right. But he make his followers believe more than one. If you want to believe is more than one God, fine. The devil got some preacher that'll tell you there's more than one God. We are not saying that there is more than one God. You're the one who claims there is more than one God and that God even took a break from being God. Because you do not believe that Jesus Christ was God in the flesh. So explain the purpose of Christ showing Thomas his hands where the Romans had pierced him. Okay, remember the word of God pierces even to the division of soul and spirit. Okay, so Christ showed Thomas his hands right before he ascended into heaven. Explain that. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2. Colossians 3 verse 1 and Mark 16 19 says Christ sits at the right hand of the throne of God. Now catch this. Revelation chapter 4 describes the throne room of heaven and 24 elders who sit on 24 thrones. These elders cast their crowns of gold before him who sits on the throne and lives forever and ever. 
their heavenly capacity, talking about Christ and these elders, it, it, it represents the afflictions suffered in the flesh because they endure to the end, like the word of God commands us. Colossians chapter 1 verse 15 states that Christ is the firstborn of all creation. So there you have it. Christ was born in the flesh, of course, when he came and lived 33 years on the earth. But this is talking about a heavenly birth. So God is born again, because Geno Jennings likes to say God cannot be born, which is a heresy. God can do whatever he wants to do. Okay, so Philippians chapter 2, verse 9 through 11, says that God has highly exalted Christ. Now, these are two persons. God has highly exalted Christ and given him the name which is above every name. Okay, and then there is also scripture that states that the, the father said to the son, thy throne, O God, is forever a scepter of righteousness. Why is it speaking like this again? Because of the peril of sin, God had to send himself into the future and, and, and be multiple persons acting in a capacity to redeem man. He had to send his Holy Spirit to live in man. I hope you're following me so far. So in addition to that, the throne that Christ inherits at the right hand of the Father is his reward for the capacity of which he fulfilled righteousness in the flesh. Remember, the incredible cost of sin separated God from himself. That's what sin did. In order for God to redeem man, he would have to be separated from himself. That's really what that boils down to, this whole Godhead thing. Okay, God was one in the garden. I already established that. Because he was walking in the pool of the day with Adam. You don't hear anything about the Holy Spirit, any of that. Okay, because Adam was one whole being. He hadn't yet to sin. So to save Adam, he had to send the Holy Spirit to seal us unto the day of redemption. You can't see. A search was put on. Revelation 5 and verse 1. I want you to hear, man. Then we're going to go to work and cut you open and stitch your clothes. Wonderful. Revelation chapter 5, beginning at verse 1, says, And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne. Said what? And I saw in the right hand. I saw in the right hand. Of him that sat on the throne. Of them. Of him. That sat on the throne. Of him that There's sat. There's only one up there. That's right. One on the throne. That's right. He's not sharing his throne with nobody. Nobody's sitting on the arm of it. <laughs> No. Nobody's on his lap. <laughs> Nobody. Nobody. He's by himself, with himself, God. That's right. What's his name? Jesus. That's Who right. is it? Christ. That's right. Now, please understand that Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is God having to pierce to the division of soul and spirit because Adam was divided when he fell. That was, again, that was the cost of sin. Yet Christ was slain before the foundation of the world because God is not bound by time. Okay, this is just an attribute that we have to accept that God has. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 15 says, That which is has already been, and God requires an account of what is past. So we ought to give God ever more praise because it was against his nature to pierce unto the division and depart from himself. And this brings attention to how perilous and confusing sin really is. Because had Adam never sinned, God would never had to manifest himself as Son and Holy Spirit sent to seal sinful men and convict them of sins. There. That can die for us. Right. God would have found them. That's right. Because the search was put on. That's right. And if God didn't find them, I know you didn't. <laughs> Amen. 
No man in heaven. And no man, no in, man heaven, in earth, neither under the earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book. Was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. There was no natural human being in heaven. That's right. That can fulfill the prophecy of the word of God. That's right. Yet Jesus was there. <laughs> Amen. Praise His great name. Amen. Jesus was there. That's right. And while he was there, he had the title Father. That's right. He wasn't yet wearing the title Son by redemption. Mm. Go ahead. Because there was nobody that was redeemed yet. That's right. For us to be redeemed, blood had to be shed, Amen. and there was no blood up there. That's right. Again. This is a fallacy because before the foundation of the world, Christ was already slain. Blood had to be shed Amen. and there was no blood up there. That's right. That's right. Glory to God, that's why he searched. No man in heaven. You know, atonement called for blood. That's right. Atonement don't call for spirit. That's right. Hallelujah. Atonement calls for blood. That's right. Thank God in the days of Moses. Mm -hmm in order for the Israelites to escape the death angel, yeah. the blood That's right. of the unspotted sacrifice. That's right. Thank God was put over the door. See again, he just said Jesus Christ is not God because God is a spirit and blood was needed to redeem man of sin. But Christ was born from above. <laughs> The Holy Spirit came upon Mary. This is how we know Joseph was not his biological father. The wise men and the prophets were witnesses and believers of the word that foretold his coming. Because Mary could have been accused of adultery by Joseph since she was engaged to him during the birth of Christ. You see, sin creates confusion. Christ could not be born through the seed of sinful man so the blood that redeemed man was spiritual god is a spirit only god's blood can redeem man it's not his fault that you cannot understand that gino but i will have to do a part two and give a different perspective of the godhead or what some call the trinity